Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode with questions with Matt and Mark. So I'm gonna start first this week, Matt. So right. there's been a lot of changes that Apple has come out with to their privacy details yep. and their settings within the App Store. So can you just talk a little bit about how that might affect Apple and just other competitors, I guess, to Apple? Yeah, I mean, first thing I'll throw out there, the usual when we talk about specific names like this, this is not a, um, we're not advocating for or against any specific names that I mentioned. But Mark, when you kind of ask this question, the thing I think about immediately is advertisers. I'm thinking of companies like Facebook. I'm thinking about companies like Google, companies that derive so much of their revenue through ads. And if they have a harder time tracking the person and narrowing that scope, that target towards that person, it's going to have an effect. Right. And so, you know, who knows? I mean, these companies are good about designing around these things. But I would just say the thing that comes to mind is think of the ones who are making money by having the ability for that wide scope. And, uh, you know, eventually might put pressure on others like, say, the Android platform to follow suit. Yeah. Could. Yeah, for sure. Could. Yeah, it's just it, it's been a huge transition to, to digital advertising. Oh, yeah. It's a huge source of revenue for companies today. And I think what's going to happen, viewers, is the, as time goes on, for advertisers to have that niche-specific marketing, it's going to get more expensive for them to find that end consumer as more people are concerned about their privacy. Yeah, yeah, great. So this, uh, this week I have a little bit of a different question for you, Mark, compared to normal. It involves a, a chart that I know Jenna's probably going to put up on the screen um, as we speak here. And it's a chart from our friend Brian Finaldi. And Brian was on our podcast, episode 110. And the title of the tweet is, Why I'm a Long-Term Investor. And visually speaking, I know I showed it to you uh, before we did the questions here. Mm -hmm. It shows kind of performance of the S&P 500 over various holding periods rolling. You just kind of verbalize to, to viewers as to why that's beneficial because the market's not always gonna go up every day. And yeah. sometimes we need a reminder. Yeah, absolutely, and I think I got this quote from you, but over the long term, the market is a wealth generating machine. And I think it's crystal clear to see that if you just go on Google and Google a chart of the S&P 500 over the past 50 or 60 years, right? The line starts in the lower left-hand corner of the chart and goes to the upper right. And it's very clear to see that, you know, if you have a long time horizon, the stock market's one of the best ways to grow your wealth. Um, and obviously, like you said and alluded to, that day to day, me nor you can tell if the market's gonna go up, down, or sideways, but we have the data that the longer your time horizon gets, the more uh, success people have in making money. And there actually has never been a 20 year rolling time horizon where the stock market has lost money. Yep, and anything's possible in the future, past performance not indicative of future results. Right. But when you look at that, that includes uh, the Great Depression in, in the 30s. Um, so we didn't, it includes some pretty tough time periods. Yeah, absolutely. So I know we talked about this uh, on the podcast a few episodes ago. So if people want to hear more about that, go ahead and check out the Independent Advisors podcast on all the major media outlets that you can listen to your podcast. All right, viewers, we're back next week with another set of questions with Matt and Mark, and we will see you then.